So, so oddly enough, people think of writing as dialogue, and, and to me, di uh, writing is structure. Dialogue is the is the cherry on top. The cherry on top does not support the ice cream sundae. It's it's a it's a delicious little added thing. But the real storytelling, the real structuring, that to me is the the hard part of writing, building the the scaffolding, the skeleton of the story, if you will. For a long time, I tried to think out everything in the story, even though I know things would completely change as I, as I go on. However, now I've realized that it doesn't do me much good to think too much past the middle. I mean, I might know where I want to go. I mean, it, you know, I write genre pieces, so you have an idea what the third act's going to be, uh, you know, and Kill Bill. I guess she'll probably kill Bill at the end. <laughs> right, you know. uh, but, you know, a genre movie, you think you know where you're going, and you're probably right, and you have an idea of how you might want the ending to end as far as, you know, for both a movie and for an audience. But for the most part, you can kind of work out more or less what's going to get you to the middle. But to think beyond that is kind of silly because by the time you get to the middle when you've actually been writing it, well, it's a different story now. It's mm. a different thing now. now. Now you are the characters. You know the characters. Things that you could never have known before you started yeah. writing are now, they're in your blood. It's like this entire, you know, there is a mythology to my movies to some degree or another. And that mythology is delivered as as I write. And I might have a, a, a checklist of things that I might want to do during the course of the time, but some of them, you know, are, you know uh, become irrelevant yeah. as you go on. And when other ones take their place and some things that you thought could have been a big deal, well, they are a big deal. And some things you, about maybe half the reason you wanted to write it. By the time you get to where that would happen, eh, it's, it's for something else. It's not for this. But by the time you get to the middle, that's where you want to be. You want to have the, be this expert. You want to be in the middle of the story. You want to know who these people are. And now, with all this knowledge, now you figure out where you want to go for the second half. I'm trying to write to that spot where I don't know what's going to happen. I'm trying to get to that. I'm trying to get off that, 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 that that blueprint and I'm trying to get to that place where now the characters are telling me and the characters are exciting me I'd be being disingenuous with you to say that I kind of can construct a story I mean I never feel like I know how the, to construct the story except just like that's a great way what you just said like yeah dumping things on a table and like spreading them around like that for sure and hopefully getting lucky enough to kind of get enough things going in a row that feels like something worth doing, something worth telling, something worth going to shoot. I open up a file, final draft, and I write about a page of story beats, mm -hmm. which would be single lines. So, uh, spaceship on the way to the sun, you know, seven characters or eight, or I can't even remember how many mm -hmm. there are. So it goes on. and. Uh, just single lines and the lines are the basic beats of the story and when I've got to the end I sort of take the cursor up to the top of the page so I've got about a page of lines I take the cursor back up to the top of the page and I write the first scene and as I reach story beats I delete them mm -hmm. so eventually so the script is getting longer and the story beats list which is only a page is getting shorter Mm -hmm. Eventually, I delete the last line, and at that point, I've got a full script, and that's it. So that, that, that's a first draft, and it will be crap. Um, uh, but that's okay, because I know that uh, there's a couple of things I get from that. One is, you've got something to work with, mm -hmm. and it's getting to that point that's often the hardest bit. You read something, I can't remember who the quote is from, the enormous dust, uh, uh, enormous dust? The enormous, enormous dust, yes. The, the enormous dust influence. See, that's an <laughs> example of creative, sort of, some kind of yeah. uh, syntax. Uh, uh, the enormous dust influence, Lee. Uh, the, somebody said that if the author doesn't know where the story is going, the audience can't possibly know. I write really structurally. I, I have to start... Um, I really I spend I spend this uh, the first big chunk of time just working in little notebooks and all I do is I draw like arcs and split them out into like sequences. I need to basically be able to see the whole plot in my head before I can sit down and actually start writing or I'll get lost in the weeds. Um, so I plan and plan and plan and plan and this was um, like that only more so. This was even more crucial for me to have the whole thing mapped out. But then you actually <clears throat> get into it and as you guys who are writers you know you get into it and no matter how much you plan 
you know, it's it's like you you plan out your map through the forest, looking at like the map and in your cozy living room, and then you get in there and you're actually hacking through the forest and you figure out stuff doesn't work and you figure out new paths and um, so yeah, it's kind of a mixture, I guess. I don't outline. I don't outline. I, 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 I well, I, I mean, I say that I, do, I definitely don't outline before I start writing. Um, there is a moment when I do outline, but it's only after I have a great deal of material. I find when I outline before I write, it, it's the fastest way to kill all my ideas. I can't. Um, I can't. Uh, somehow it, it, it makes everything quite literal for me. I've never outlined before. I use index cards. It just kind of organizes uh, my mind. I've never index carded the whole movie uh, because I don't think I've ever, at the point when I've started writing a screenplay, known everything that there is to know uh, about the whole movie. I've figured out how it's gonna start and I have some other things along the way. But it's kind of like walking in the dark with a flashlight. You can really only see as far ahead of you as, as the light goes. I think rules are great if you're in trouble, and if they're, you're not in any trouble with what you're writing, they're absolutely useless and, and possibly worse than useless. Uh, it may happen that every script has, a, has the characters established by page 10, and it may not. I don't think there's any reason to be thinking about that when you're trying to write a script. And it may be that every successful script has a reversal and half two thirds of the way through and one another one a third of the way through. I don't know. It's not really, I don't see what you're gonna, I, 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 don't, I, I don't think that kind of, I think that kind of thing, I think every time I read a script and it goes off, it's because at that point the script is trying to be like a script and it's not, and, and it, it's at that exact moment when it loses its individuality and, and its interest. I mean, what I do is I do a very detailed uh, uh, step outline of the story. And then you break it down to like what every, all the scenes that need to be there. I go and I put in all the log, uh, all the scene settings of every scene so I know where you are and at what time, you know, and actually it's good to figure out so the, the rhythm of day and night in, in, in movies. I mean, Little Miss Sunshine is three days. Most films are like a few days and you want this rhythm between day and night. You don't want to be cutting from day to day, you know, from one day to the next day. You want to be moving up and down and so I'll go through and just do all the log lines, or not log lines, all the scene lines, slug lines, and just put them in. And you can see, you can even see at that point if something, if there's an action sequence that's too long, or if there's something that you could, oh, there could be another scene in here. And once you've got all, you know, you got your 50 slug lines or whatever they are, your 50 scenes, then you just can go ahead and put your dialogue into them. And what I've started doing at Pixar now is doing what I call a sequence outline, which is you break the film down into, you know, 15 or 20 sequences. And I do it on four pieces of paper. So I do the first act on one piece of paper, which is the title of the sequence and then what happens in it. And usually you have five or six sequences in your first act and then the second page is the second quarter of the film which will take you to your midpoint the third page is the third quarter and then the last page and then you have your whole film is on four pages but it breaks down it by act basically you know you get to the end, at the end of the first page you get to the end of the first act and you can just look at stuff and and because it's broken down by sequence you can figure out you know this right here can go over here you know you're able to visually see the whole film and i find that really helpful in terms of moving stuff around but with index cards i always feel like it's just too much it's just clutter everywhere you know on the floor of your apartment and it's better to just be able to put four sheets of paper in front of you and figure out why something isn't working or not. Mm. I'm such a strong believer in knowing where you're going before you start out that hopefully once you've, and, and inevitably things change, you know, I mean, that's what you, you, just things change, but hopefully you'll at least get to the end of your first draft, you know, with a semblance of what you started out trying to do. Yeah. It's a big deal for me. Um, I, I can usually look at an outline, which is usually about, you know, it's like I'll be able to just have scene headings, you know, and, um, you know, her in her office or something like that, where she realizes this or gets the first message or whatever it is. And that will that will go for about three pages, you know, of, of that. And I can usually start to see the rhythms and see what's wrong with, with the piece um, and what needs to be um, thought more about. We would sit in front of a cork board, three feet by five feet, with a big thing of thumbtacks and a big thing of index cards and a whole bunch of Sharpie magic markers. And we'd sit there and we'd say, okay, what's the teaser? What, you know, what, 
and you build it brick by brick. Each card represents a, 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 a plot beat. Not necessarily a scene, but you know, three or four, six, eight cards might represent one scene. And by the end of it, you filled up this entire three foot by five foot cork board with a teaser and, and, and the, the, the four act structure sitting there together or alone. Alone is much harder still. And figuring out each plot beat is essentially the, the good analogy, I suppose, is a bunch of engineers sitting around on their drafting tables or their communal drafting table and drawing the, the, the design, the, the, drawing the architectural drawings for a skyscraper. Then you got to go build a skyscraper, which is a huge amount of man hour and labor and, you know, uh, all of that. But you can't build that skyscraper unless you got the architectural blueprints to begin with. And to us, an actual sitting down and writing is, it's kind of carefree compared to the breaking. Because I've got this outline, uh, I've got these, these index cards, and I know, you know, what happens next. So the writing is an important part of it, but it's not the hardest part, and it's not, to me, the most crucial part.